I'm reading a book. It's titled The Gulag Archipelago. It's by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. <laughs> I probably didn't get that right, but anyhow, that's that's sort of his name. Uh, the book describes sort of like the life and the workings of the totalitarian communist regime in Russia under Vladimir Lenin. Uh, a gulag is basically a prison. It's a it's a forced labor camp. Now, I've heard about this book for for years. I love to read, and I've heard about it, and I've read quotes from the book by other, author, other authors many times. I've never actually read it myself because, uh, in a way, I didn't want to read it. <laughs> it's a, for one thing, it's very long, and I'm more accustomed to coloring books, uh, but also I didn't want to read it in a way because I knew it was going to be unpleasant. And, uh, and it is. It's unpleasant. It's interesting. It's very informative, but it's sad. And it's troubling to read this. It's sobering. Uh, so in a way, I've kind of, I knew that would be the case and I've avoided it. Uh, but my friend George, who is very, very kind and generous to me, I mean, he, he really, he gave me a first edition of this book as a gift. Um, <laughs> when someone gives you a first edition of a classic piece of literature, you really need you, you really need to read it. That's really it's that's the right thing to do. So uh, thanks a lot, George and Mindy. I'm reading it. All right, I'm kidding. They they know I'm kidding. They know I'm joking around. A actually, I've only read about sixty pages of a six hundred plus page book. <laughs> so this is not. This is not a book report. It's not a review of the book. I'm not far enough along to honestly do that. I just wanted to share a thought that I've had as I've been reading even just this much of the book. I, this thought. Um, really, it's, it's more of an internal struggle in a way as I've been reading the book. On the one hand, as I'm reading, uh, what happened to people and, and just the tactics of Stalin's government. Uh, I'm reading it and I'm, I want to believe, I want to believe, well, that could never happen, uh, at least not here in the United States. I, I want to believe, I, I want to believe like that was a certain time and a certain place in history and, and things are so much different now and our government is structured in such a way that that could never happen. I've wanted to, that that's going on in my mind. I've wanted to believe that. On the other hand, however, <laughs> I know intellectually, I know that it is possible. It's possible. As a matter of fact, the things that Solzhenitsyn is describing, you know, back then, they are happening in our world right now, today, in places like uh, China. And, and Cuba and other places like that. So I hope it never happens here, for sure. I don't think it will. But is such a thing possible? Yeah, of course it is. It's possible. When governments get power, power, lots of power, more and more power. I don't even think it has to be like absolute power. When governments get like just a little too much power, that usually doesn't go well for people. You know what I mean? It's just, this is just one of the lessons we can learn from history. When a government agent or a government agency comes knocking at your door and says, this is going to be for your own good. History would suggest that often, not every time, but often, the opposite is true. You know, the people we refer to sometimes as the founding fathers of our country, they were not perfect people, for sure. I know that. You don't have to send me messages. I know. They were not perfect people. I know that. But uh, they got a lot of things right. They really did. Uh, and they went to great pains to create a government that, that had checks and balances on power. They really did. They, they paid attention to that reality when they were setting things up. Checks 
and balances on power uh, within the operation of the government and the various government agencies themselves and checks and balances on the power of the government over the lives of the regular citizens. That's a very good thing. Checks and balances on government power. Hey, you know what? Whether you're on the right or the left politically, either side, either way, it makes sense for all of us, <laughs> all of us to be in favor of checks and balances on the power of the government over our lives. That makes a lot of sense. I, I believe it will benefit us greatly, greatly to always do whatever we can do. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like much. Maybe it's just how we vote, but whatever we can do to make sure that those checks and balances on the power of the government are always maintained.